Hi, and welcome to my channel. Hold on, hold on. What's up, Master Ran? Hey, how's it going? Oh, no, welcome to Charlie Town. <laughs> Great to be here. So most people teach this like this. He punches, I block, I punch. Right? Josh and Nick Nagamitting made a statement years ago. Okay. He said, block and strike must be one action. One motion contains two actions minimum. He didn't say could be, should be, may be, must be. So how do you do that with every movement in your kata? It's in there. That's a Zen riddle for you. Okay? You figure out how each movement karate blocks and strikes simultaneously. You're starting to get a handle on some stuff. Okay. So I'll give you one example. How does this block and strike simultaneous? The retracting hand is one way. Okay, so it also could be the other hand. This hand could be the blocking one, and this one could be the striking one. Okay, this can be the blocking one, and this can be the striking one. This is a simultaneous action too. You notice here, here. So. David's punching in. This is the block and the strike. This is the block, I mean, this is the strike and strike simultaneous. One way to do it. I'm going to go over this one. So he punches, this hand comes up just like here, but I'm quickly, as I pull this down, as he more advances to hit that biceps motor point here, here, and then come up here. This will knock him out most likely. As I'm pulling back, that center knuckle can strike right behind the mastoid, into the center of the mastoid, okay, into the jaw one point right here. There's a lot of points you can hit. You can just use your basic punch, or you can do a one knuckle punch like this. When you get advanced, either this or this, you stop hitting with flat fist after a while. You watch Okinawa Masters strike. This, this. Look at a lot of pictures of Gishin. He's always using these. I've got a picture of my dojo of Gishin disarming a guy with a knife. He's toe kicking him and hitting him with the one knuckle strike at the same time. So this blocked down, this struck up. You have a problem with it, do this first. So he punches here. Okay. Then this is coming down here, here. Now the same motion will work on the left. I don't want to confuse you right now. He punches left. You can do it. Same motion, doing a different thing. But the same motion will stop him. Similar way, block and strike with one thing. So just this, I hit a point in his arm. Hit a point, or knocked back his jaw. Okay. Hit a point in his neck, hit a point in his body, just by going. Most people will visualize this as, it must be just I'm blocking that punch, leaving myself wide open for an attack. And I'm going to kind of punch him. Yeah, in fantasy land, but not in reality, that's not going to work. That's the guy's... Some type of fool doesn't know how to throw a punch. So, this motion here should finish him. If it didn't, you've got a backup plan. If you punch with the other hand, this could come down, hit, strike. Okay? You notice the hand that's retracting is doing something. It's just not pulling here for power. Sure, it gives you power to pull one hand back. But that's not the only reason for it. There's more reasons than that and better reasons than that. Okay? It's 
good. It gives you power pulling it back. So when you do the move, it's more powerful. But just to pull it back, okay, and leave yourself open makes no sense. These karate masters weren't fools. A lot of people do the self-defense. Okay, let me explain a couple things about it. This little tiny three-inch device, okay, is devastating. You can use the butt end of it to strike the pressure points. And I'd say, look, if you can mash potatoes, you can strike like this with this thing, okay? It's basically what it is. It's like mashing potatoes. It's mashing down like this. So you can hit someone who anywhere in the face is going to really hurt them with this. It's going to come in with about 20 times the pounds of square pressure that any punch will. Now, to quickly activate it, all you got to do is pull that cord lock out like that. And now you can put one hand out and say, hey, don't come any closer. You can strike down this way, or you can strike from side to it's side. It's a very strong, durable device. Remember, the shaft of it's only three inches Quick long. Quick example of how to use it. You have to wear it. So you put it on your middle finger like this, very important. You're going to hold it protruded out your hand like this, so that there's enough on the end to strike with. If it's up too high and there's not enough on the end, simply pull it down until it's protruding and grip it. That way you have enough to strike with the end of it. The top part, you want to put your thumb like this that you're holding the cord down if you want to strike with it in close range and holding it tight here if you want to strike with it like this. Remember, the finger ring is not going to put pressure on your finger if someone pulls it as long as you grip the shaft of the device. It's designed not to. So if you think someone's going to grab it and pull on your finger, not really. They're going to pull on your grip, but it's not going to put pressure on your finger as long as you're gripping it. So it was designed like that. That's why this is a patented self-defense keychain. Remember, it's very strong. 550 test paracord. Okay, you literally could hook this around something and pull yourself off the ground with it without breaking it. Okay? Now, quick way to use it is you can strike just like this down to it. So if someone's attacking, hey, stay back, you can strike like this. You can also hit them with the keys to the face. Okay, these are just basic techniques. You're gonna learn more on the advanced videos that we're coming out with or on the basic video that comes with this device. Another thing you can do if you want to try something a little more advanced is you pull this cord back into the shaft like this. You use this as a button, okay? And instead of just swinging it like this, you're gonna swing it and let, let the thumb off and this will actually shoot out through the tube like this at a high speed. See? And you don't have to worry about dropping it because the finger ring keeps it in your hands so you don't lose control of it. Okay, if you're interested in one of these devices and you haven't purchased one yet, they're a great device. It'll shoot out like this. You can use the butt end to strike or to use it to pry into points, just like the uh, Yuara type of self-defense sticks. It's used for all different types of things. You can use it to block with the cord, strike with the cord. And, and go through our playlist. We have different various um, videos on our playlist of different styles that I teach. And I'm also the inventor of the uh, Sharpshooter Self-Defense Keychain. If you're interested in taking a look at the keychain, if you're just looking for some quick self-defense, I suggest you learn how to use that keychain. Um, pick up one, it's very inexpensive and it comes with a free DVD right now. Well, thanks again for watching my channel and uh, good luck in finding a martial art. Um, give me a call, why don't you come down and try a class with me and see what the difference is of training in a private lesson academy rather than a group academy. Thanks again.